My name's Orla, and today I thought I could share with you something pretty amazing. Hmm, what do you think this looks like? Maybe a really weird game of hopscotch? No, that can't be right. I wonder what happens if I pull these strings here. Paper templates like the one we've just seen are called nets, and they are everywhere. For example, we use nets to make boxes for packaging so that we can send things all over the world. Designers and engineers use a technique called nesting to try and limit the waste material when they're cutting out shapes to use in products. This involves turning the shapes around and rearranging them so that they sit as close as possible to each other so we can get as many shapes as possible from one sheet of material. How many shapes do you think you could make by nesting different nets on one sheet of paper? Do you think you could arrange your nets so that there are no gaps between them and no overlaps? This type of arrangement is called tessellation. This means there's no waste at all. In order to really understand how our nets work, we need to have a think about 2D and 3D shapes. Let's start off with 2D. 2D stands for two dimensional, which means that we can measure our shape in two directions, length and width. This means that our shapes are flat. There are lots of different examples of 2D shapes, but today we're gonna to be focusing on ones that have straight sides. This is because inside a shape that has straight sides, there are always internal angles at a point where the sides meet. Angles tell us how tilted one line is compared to the one next to it. It sometimes helps to think of this like the hands of a clock. Angles tell us how far around the clock the hands have moved, or how many minutes have passed. Just like on a clock, we can divide a circle up into bits so we can count the angles. We call these bits degrees and we say that there's 360 of them in a full circle. Now, let's think about 3D shapes. 3D stands for three-dimensional, which means that these shapes can be measured in three ways, length, width, and height. We can see that lots of 3D shapes are made up of 2D shapes. This means we still have internal angles, but we now have more than one internal angle at a point. By looking at lots and lots of different 3D shapes, we can see that no matter what the shape looks like, we can never have more than 360 degrees at any of these points. We can demonstrate this by using an octahedron net. We can see that our net is flat on the table and that at this point our angles do not add up to 360 degrees or a full circle. So when we pull on the strings here, it forms a point that lets us make our shape 3D. When we're thinking about internal angles in 3D shapes, we can also take a look at a very special set of shapes called the platonic solids. These 3D shapes are made up of faces that we call regular 2D shapes. This means that all their sides are the same length and all their internal angles are the same size as well. This may not sound very exciting, but because of our rule about having less than 360 degrees in every point, only five of these shapes can exist. Ancient Greeks thought that these five shapes represented what they saw as the five key elements of the universe, earth, wind, water, fire, and ether, and that these five elements were the key building blocks of the whole universe. We now know that the smallest parts of matter look quite different to this, but we can still use them to build plenty of other things. What could you make using the platonic solids as building blocks? Now that we know about shapes and nets, it's time for us to make our own boxes like the ones we've seen. We start off with our A4 sheet of paper. We want to mark out seven centimetres along the long side of the sheet and do that three more times so that we have four lots of seven. We're going to cut off our leftover paper at the top, so make a mark here to remind yourself which way up to put your paper. Repeat the 7cm measurements along the opposite side and on both short sides. We'll then join the markings up to make a grid. Now that we have our grid, we'll use the scissors to cut out our shape with six boxes. These will be the six faces of our cube.
Now that we've cut out our net, it's a good idea to mark out where the holes for our thread should go. For a cube, we need six of these. Here, 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 and here. It's also a good idea to fold along the lines inside the shape, as this will help us pull it together later on. Now you might want to decorate your shape. I'm going to decorate mine with some coloured pens, but you could use whatever you'd like. Next, we'll use our pencil, or another sharp object, to poke holes at the points we drew earlier. Ask an adult if you need a bit of help for this part because it can be a wee bit footy. Once you've done that, pop a little bit of blue tack on the end shape here and then flip your net upside down and stick it to the table. This means it'll stay in place when we pull on the strings later on. Next we need some string or thread to make our shape fold up. We'll need just a bit more than a loop around our whole net. Loop the thread round like this to get a good length, then snip the end with your scissors. We now pop our thread through the holes we've made, starting by going in from underneath on the part we've stuck to the table, in from above up here, then up from underneath over here, then in from above again, then up from underneath. then in from above at the end again. Don't worry if this bit is a bit tricky. Sometimes it helps to make the hole bigger again using the pencil. Now we're ready to pull our shape together. Gently tug on the tails of the string we left at the side and your net should neatly fold up into a 3D shape. Well done! Why don't you have a go at making your own 3D shapes from nets at home? You could try and design a net for one of the shapes we've seen today. Or if you don't want to draw your own one out, you could always download and print one of our ready-made nets from the description below. We'd love to see your brilliant designs, so feel free to send us photos and videos of your amazing nets in action. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye!